Hi, I'm Kyle, and this is my social media face. You can do it. Scene. Doom. <laughs> Friedrich Nietzsche, born in 1844, was a German anti-fascist, philosopher, you doing okay? <laughs> philosopher, philologist, philanderer, and a man who felt that all of us, as cool as we are, are ultimately pointless motherfuckers. One of the fathers of modern thought, inspirer of modern memes, owner of the best or worst mustache ever, depending on your sexuality, <laughs> and most importantly, the man who taught us that, yes, God is definitely dead. <laughs> if you're not already intimately familiar with them, in which case, I'm sorry, I would like to introduce you to the suicide meme. Now, I'd like to take a break. This is Nihilist Arby's. This is the best thing to ever happen to Twitter. It's an account exclusively dedicated to Arby's ads, and it's the only reason I've ever been to Arby's. Now, <laughs> suicide memes are Nietzsche's metaphorical grandbaby. They have taken not simply his thought, but in fact his life, and distilled it, they have perfected it, until we arrived at this. A suicidal kitten, contemplating when his worthless, fuzzy little life is going to end. Me too, thanks. So, why does any of this matter? Well, it doesn't, and that's kind of the point. I could talk about his life's work, but the dumbass just died anyway, so let's talk about his legacy. So what does this mean? What is nihilism anyway? Let's take it from Nietzsche's own work, The Will to Power. A nihilist is the man who says of the world as it is, that it ought to not exist, and that the world as it ought to be, that it does not exist. According to this, existence, action, suffering, willing, and feeling, has no sense. In short, everything is awful, and the few things that aren't awful are pointless. Now, nihilism has a wonderful and storied history in counterculture. The Dada movement in the early 1900s, uh, they rejected modern capitalist principles. They instead leaned on absurdity and maintaining ties with the political far left. Franz Kafka, an anarchist, published books like The Trial and The Metamorphosis, examining the futility of being a good person. He was joined shortly afterward by Jean-Paul Sartre, who took a philosophical approach in carrying on Nietzsche's legacy. Sartre, who contributed significantly to the philosophy of existential nihilism, he himself suggested that the existence precedes essence. In other words, there's no point to life unless we make it ourselves. Nietzsche's nihilism, however, is not simply limited itself to esoteric art and literature. Punk rock, the most polarizing musical element of the 1960s and the 1970s, was positively rife with influences gleaned from Nietzsche's and later thinkers' nihilism. Punk rock was not simply music, but an entire movement that said, in essence, fuck the man. Fuck what they think of me. Fuck what they think I should do. And basically, fuck any meaning except what I make for myself. And through their art and through their writing, these people throughout history have taken nihilism, and they've agreed. It's okay to not be understood. Now, if you look at this meme in the previous slide, you can actually see the link here. Now, believe it or not, this is the modern Dada. This is the modern punk rock. Now, it, it's taken quite a turn, uh, but there is one man who is responsible for popularizing the notion that it's not simply okay to be not okay, but it's in fact understandable to be not okay. And that man is Friedrich Nietzsche. And the thing at the core of Nietzsche's work, the thing at the core of the modern me movement, it's the same thing. It's the idea that life is pointless. Directly speaking, the existential nihilism that we use for off-the-cuff self-deprecation, it wouldn't exist today without our Mount Friedrich. Now, there are two sorts of existential nihilism. There's the sort that Friedrich Nietzsche lived with, and that said, world means nothing, but you work hard, you suffer heroically, and you can make your own meaning out of it. But then, there's the nihilism that Nietzsche died with. Friedrich Nietzsche died of syphilitic insanity. It was Nietzsche's landlords who noticed something was up first, because back in those times, anti-fascists had relationships with their landlords, as opposed to now, where we just all kind of want to eat them. Um, he calls on them one day in a fit of joy in January in 1889, and he says, Hey, today is a festival day. Everyone's parading outside. The king and the queen of Italy are coming to tour and just to visit me in my room. And landlords look outside, and they see the streets dark. They see the conspicuous lack of festival. They see the super conspicuous lack of queen and king. And it's at this point they begin to suspect Friedrich is off his fucking rocker. So the shtick had been going on for a few days when the landlord looks outside yet again, and this time he sees Nietzsche himself being hauled by two guardsmen, followed by this time an actual parade of interested onlookers. 
Um, apparently, as legend states, Nietzsche had seen a horse being flogged in public and had heroically thrown his arms around the neck of the animal in order to save it. Now, this had naturally gotten him taken into custody, only to be released when the landlords, in yet another incredible and weird showing of a landlord giving a shit about their tenant, uh, agreed to get Friedrich some mental help. Now, unfortunately, in those times, mental help was hard to come by, unlike today. Today, we have not simply therapy, but home therapy in the form of Nietzsche's aforementioned grandchildren, his legacy on the internet, suicide memes. Now, according to a recent article in The Atlantic, <laughs> suicide memes may actually be therapeutic. There have actually been multiple studies in recent years stating that memes regarding suicide may in fact be therapeutic. Incredibly ironically, the one thing keeping me from dying is talking about how fucking much I want to die. Uh, tonight they let me in front of a crowd to talk about it, and that might keep me alive for another couple weeks, who knows. And through the... Ah, why? <laughs> now, according to April Foreman at the American Association of Suicidology, this is the writing of a new social script. Sharing these memes is a way to reach out for help for those afraid of taboo. And responding to these memes is a way for people on the other side of the planet to offer help, whether it's through an offer to talk, a link to a suicide hotline, or just commiseration and a statement that, hey man, that's really rough. I've been through the same thing. Bart Andrews, also of the American Association of Suicidology, is, as The Atlantic puts it, a full-throated advocate of suicide memes. These memes, he says, are not explicit, they don't generally describe how to kill oneself. They don't glorify suicide. They simply state facts. I'm dissatisfied, and I want to die. <laughs> and through this mimetic counterculture of sharing dissatisfaction of life, a community is being built. A community not just of commiseration, but in fact of understanding and of camaraderie. Today's world is, is just fucking awful. Um, everybody has nukes again. Global warming is probably going to sink the public works within my lifetime. I've got like 200 bucks in my savings account, and that's kind of a lot for me. Um, and boy, do I just, I really want to die. Um, and I'm not alone. The media won't stop talking about what a horrible time my generation is having, and we're paying attention. We have spent <laughs> generations upon generations embracing aspects of nihilism. From Dada to punk rock, we have rebelled against the socially accepted meaning of life. But in fact, never, not before this moment in history, has there been a counter that, counterculture that said, fuck the culture, fuck the counterculture, fuck the future, I actually just want to die. And <sighs> suicide memes are really the most Nietzsche-esque nihilist moment since the death of Nietzsche himself. Let's get back to that. Long story short, he didn't get that mental help. The next few days, Nietzsche spends writing letters to friends, and these eventually come to be known as his Madness Letters, or his Wanzettel. This one was written to a certain Umberto. To my beloved son, Umberto, who I should mention is not his son, but is the king of Italy. <laughs> May peace be with you. Tuesday I shall be in Rome. I should like to see you along with His Holiness the Pope. Signed, The Crucified. Now, these were, in my mind, some of the most nihilistic works of his career. Absolutely non-fucking-sensical, completely devoid of any intrinsic meaning, worth only as much as they are to the beholder. For example. <laughs> so, so, Nietzsche writes these madness letters to his friends. Being good friends, they immediately seek mental help for the poor guy. Uh, he ends up going to live in the care of his mother, not for the next few months, but in fact for the next seven years, followed by three more years in the care of his sister. During this 10-year period, Nietzsche was completely silent. Some speculate it was the after effects of a stroke, some speculate it was the side effect of syphilis, others still think he overdosed on his own miserable ideology. <laughs> his death was, like the last 10 years of his life and the last 25 years of mine, upsetting and pointless. Now, nevertheless, Friedrich Nietzsche managed to accomplish my life's goal. He died. Now, look at this meme. <laughs> Ten years ago, this meme would be considered in horrible taste. It still kind of is, but now it's safe for work. <laughs> at my desk, at work, I have a little digital photo frame filled with memes just like this. Any person can walk up to my space to schedule a meeting with me or collaborate on work with me and find out just how many memes I have saved 
because they're a work-appropriate way to shout, fucking help me, I want to die, to all the people who work with me. And I think memes like this one and memes like this one can illustrate three things. <laughs> one, I really want to die. Two, I find endless humor in that. And three, for some reason, I'm still here. I know, what's with that, right? The thing is, these endless meme factories, thank you, thank you, uh, not just on places like 9gag and on Reddit, but also within our own minds, they can bring endless joy and cheer and satisfaction. But also, scientifically speaking, they are certifiably insane. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> this group-sanctioned, at times socially encouraged sharing of suicidal thought is a brand of insanity that is the direct descendant of Nietzsche's fruitless death. And with that, I would like to share one more Nietzsche quote from his book, Beyond Good and Evil. In individuals, insanity is rare, but in groups, parties, nations, and epochs, it is the rule. And to that, I raise my glass, which I forgot to bring on the stage, to insanity, syphilitic or mimetic. May it ever continue to keep us ignorant of the torture that is life. Thank you.